hypnotherapy kind of where does hypnotherapy sit in someone's overall treatment for let's say high levels of anxiety is it the be all end all or is it a part of overall okay rehabilitation let's say maybe if i break down a typical session it yeah, might let's, help let's do that. people to understand the toolkit that I use, and it's not just hypnosis, there's many other things that are involved. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing that we need to get the person to understand is a stress response. And when we're in that stress response, we're not logical. Our limbic system has been um, switched on into fight, flight, freeze. This is a problem because that means that we're not going to talk ourselves through it so well. We're going to have the disaster scenario channel on. And that means that our adrenals, our, um, our whole system hormonally is different to our normal parasympathetic nervous system setting. Mm -hmm. So our sympathetic nervous system, sympathetic to the threat, is now in charge of the house. Okay, This is a problem because it means that we're reactionary. So we're not going to think about it in a logical way, but we might react in a not so great way. So we could fight, flight go, you know, get out of there, or freeze. Now, that's great on one level uh, for survival in some situations, but now modern day space, that doesn't always work, right? Mm -hmm. So you're getting a lot of people who don't want to go to work anymore because they've got anxiety or school. Lots of people not wanting to turn up to school because they're just full, full of anxiety. Uh, what my job is, is to help them to understand the three keys into um, switching the sympathetic nervous system back into the parasympathetic nervous system setting. The first part is the breath. So if we're breathing badly, let's say we, we have a fright, we go, <gasps> our belly gets sucked up mm. into our diaphragmatic area. So the diaphragmatic muscle goes up and we're going to be shallow breathing. This is quite useful if it really needs to be oxygenating our system. We go, you know, and we're getting oxygen into our extremities so we can fight or fly. Uh, however, not so useful to calm the farm, right? So when we breathe diaphragmatically, using the belly to draw the breath, in, you know, down, so we should be breathing in deeply and feeling the belly relax. And as we breathe in fully and deeply into the bottom of our lungs, this is a key, that sends a very clear signal to the central nervous system, I am safe, all mm. is well. This is the first step. The second part is microtension in the body. If our body's still holding on for, for dear life and in microtension, so externally I might not be able to see that you're tense, but internally you're holding tension somewhere. So if you can do a body scan and just go, okay, can I relax my jaw a little bit more? Can I relax my tongue a little bit more? Can I relax mm. my throat, my neck, my shoulders, my arms, hands, fingers? Can we go through the body and begin to relax it? This is really important because if we want to shift then the state of mind, the, the story, we must get those two other parts right. So when we sigh, so breathing in and we relax the diaphragmatic area. This is our first part of helping our physical body to relax too. So we can actually then use that sigh action to relax that microtension throughout the body. So we breathe in, sigh it out. So the exhalation's longer than the inhalation. Mm -hmm. And it's taking that sigh and utilizing it. So when we sigh, we are sending that message into our body, okay, it's, it's all right to relax now. Then our mind can shift to channel happy rather than channel doomsday. Mm -hmm. Because if we're still in microtension in our body and we're still breathing incorrectly, it's near impossible for the brain to shift into channel happy. Got oh, you. Yeah. Right. So this is where the hypnotic mindset and the idea of the power of suggestion, the power of telling the brain what you desire rather than what you don't want is a big part of the three keys of relaxing. Got oh, you. Yeah. So breath, relax body, shift mind. What's the new story you want? And then you tell yourself that, and then you just go through the motions. 
And then I guess it sounds like it gets to a point as well where you can do that yourself. Oh, yeah. Well. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big part of what I teach a lot of my clients. Mm-hmm. Because they're accidentally building that tension, not realizing they have all the tools to undo it. They just haven't done it. A lot of people go, oh, I've done a couple of deep breaths and it doesn't work. I'm like, okay, show me. What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they might do it three or four times and hope that that's going to work. It's not going to work. It takes a little longer than that. You've just dumped adrenals, um, adrenaline and cortisol and, you know, all the stress hormones. And it takes about five minutes to process that away yeah. and shift into your happy hormone system, right? Mm-hmm. So you run up um, Mount Cow Cow and it's going to take you at least five minutes of recovery mm-hmm. to stop sweating and, and, you know, get your heart rate regulated and all of those things. So why would you expect anything different? Because your brain feels like it's just run up. Mount, mm-hmm. Mount Cow Cow or somewhere, you know, really steep and like you've, you're running away from the lion. That's what your brain and body is starting to, you know, experience when anxiety and stress happens. Thank you for watching that clip. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the left. And if you want to watch the full episode, hit the square on the bottom. To watch another small clip, go ahead and hit that square on top. And if you just want to listen to the full episode but don't have time to watch it, you can find this podcast wherever podcasts are listened to. Thanks. Bye.